Hello, Bobcat, and all you other OCPS teachers out there, or teachers around the world who have stumbled across my videos. I wanted to go today to look a little bit at a feature in Canvas called New Quizzes. Now, this was in beta for a while, and we had access to it before here, but now it's pretty publicly available. So I wanted to talk about New Quizzes, what they are, and why you might decide to use them. So to get started, you're going to go into Quizzes, and we're going to add a new quiz. Then it should give you this prompt for either classic quizzes or new quizzes. So we want to select new quizzes. It's up to you if you want to remember this choice. There may be times where you want to use just a classic quiz, but for now I'm going to say new quizzes and then hit submit. You can also change this setting in the settings menu. Now unlike regular quizzes where you would normally have the options for questions at the top, we're just going to set up the assignment information. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to call this one practice quiz. We give it however many points it's worth, what assignment category it is it wants to go in. Remember, these assignment categories need to match the Skyward ones if you're in OCPS. How you want it to display, we, depending on if we want students to have limited or unlimited attempts. And then, as always, we want to sync to our SIS and give it a due date. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and hit Save. So that page looks a lot like setting up an assignment. Once you've done that, it will push you into the new quizzes interface. New quizzes are a little bit easier to edit in my opinion. Here's where you'll give it a title, any instructions you may want the students to have, and then this is just our normal text editor. The beauty of new quizzes comes from the question types that are available, because there are a lot more question types than the regular multiple choice and things like that. So to demonstrate, I'm going to show you some of the really awesome question choices available in here, and then I'll show you how to use and create each of them. One of the first options that's really new and different is the categorization. So in this case, you give them a prompt, and then you give them categories. You can have two or more categories if you want. And then you drag the, have them drag the items in the correct places. So green beans are a vegetable. Fruit, vegetable and so on until we place them all. This question type allows for distractors, so items that don't belong in either one as well. In order to create those, all you do is hit the plus sign and then hit categorization. And then once you hit categorization, you'll have the edit pane where you title the question, give the prompt, list the categories, and then the items that go within each category. If you want to add a third or a fourth category, you simply hit plus category and add another one. Any distractors you want to add, you add at the bottom. And if you want them to have a calculator to work on these problems, you can allow that as well. Another question type is the matching. So in this case, it gives you your four terms on the left-hand side. And then on the right, you have a drop-down for the various choices. So here are your various choice options. In order to create this one, again, you hit that plus sign, then you choose matching, and as before, you give a title for the question, your prompt, and then your pairs. So your definition and your term, you can do any kind of answer pairs you would like, and you have them both right there. You can add additional distractors again that are not actually one of the answers, and you can also shuffle the options if you would like to do that. The next question type is the fill in the blank. You can literally give students a blank to where all they have to do is type an answer plus into a canvas course. There's the answers. Setting this one up again, hit the plus sign and do a fill in the blank. And all you do here is you type, you give it a title and you can add a stem if you want, but you type your sentence and then you just select the text you want them to fill in. So here's my sentence and I'm going to say I wanted them to fill in cross. I select that text and hit enter, and then I had them fill in the last part of Canvas. I left the C to give them a, a support, a little su help, and there we go. I can now choose open entry. I can give them a drop down of choices, and I just have to give the different choices I want them to have available, or I can give an entire word bank to fill in those gaps. And then I can also do the text match. This is what gets a little bit better than other fill-in-the-blank options out there. So you can do contains cross. So if they misspelled or something like that, um, if they put a full sentence, if they put more than the information they need, as long as it contains cross, they're correct. I can also do close enough. And I can say 
one I can give it how close I want it to be. The higher this number, the more forgiving it will be with spelling errors. And if we don't want to worry about case, then we can do that as well. And we can do exact match or specify specific correct answers for each of those options. One of the other ones that's really cool is called the hotspot. So in this case, you give it a picture and the students have to click on what you tell them to click on. So, so I'm going to say click on the doctor. I click right there. That's now my hotspot. In this case, that would be the correct answer. When you create the hotspot question, again, you hit the plus sign. You click hotspot. And then that will give you this dialog here where you can upload an image to start with. And then once you have the image, you select the area you want them to be able to click on. So I just went ahead and I selected right there. And boom. Now as long as they click in that blue area on theirs, they'll be good to go. So clicks within the hotspot will receive full points. Nice and simple on that one. And then the last one is an ordering question where they can put the pieces in the correct order. So rearrange the colors uh, for the rainbow. I'm going to move that guy up. Move this guy up. Got to remember my Roy G. Biv, and there we go. Now I've answered all the questions. So to create this one, one last time, plus sign. Ordering is the question type. And once I'm in it, I can simply give a prompt, give a name, give the options. You can put one above and one below the sorting, and then as many of these items in here as you want. And if you wanted lengthier paragraphs, you could give them full paragraphs even and tell them to put the story in order or anything like that. Once you are all done, now you've created your quiz, you've added however many questions you want, you go ahead and hit return. And now we can add it into a module. Now this is important because this is a little weird the way you have to add it into a module. Because even though you would think you would do the plus sign, and then click quizzes. Notice I have no quiz here. This is what happens is people do this and then they don't see a quiz and they freak out. It's okay. It actually gets listed under assignment. There it is right there. Practice quiz. The reason is technically new quizzes is run as an external tool. So it's being run as an assignment with an external tool submission. So that's where you'll find it is under assignment, not under quizzes where you would expect it to be. I hope this one helped you guys out. I know it was a little bit longer than a lot of my other videos, but hopefully it helped you out how to use new quizzes, how to create the new question types available in there. And as always, if you have any questions for me, you can always reach out to me at bradley.schreffler at ocps.net. I'll be glad to help you guys out there. And I know you are going to do awesome things for and with your students this year.